just a reminder that this session is being recorded and will be uploaded to WordPress TV and also to YouTube. Um, this developer hour session is part of a series that um, that we're we're running. Um, I think we've had six or seven now. Uh, I've lost count. Uh, and in this session, we're uh, very pleased to welcome uh, Adam, who is going to be talking about WordPress Playground. Adam is one of the uh, the developers of uh, WordPress Playground, so we're we're very honoured to have him. Uh, talk to us about it. Um, as I said a little earlier, uh, as people were still joining, please do turn on your video if you wish. It'd be great to see you and make it feel more like it's a, a conversation. But uh, but do please remain muted during the presentation. Uh, there'll be an opportunity for questions uh, a bit later on. Um, I'm just going to put a couple of links up for you. Um, if you're not, if you're new to WordPress Playground, here is the uh, announcement post, which I think was authored, authored by Adam, wasn't it? Yeah, yes, it was. <laughs> and hello, everyone, by the way. And, um, uh, and here is the project repo. If you want to get involved and post issues and PRs, I'm sure it, you know any. It's an open source project, so everyone's welcome to contribute. Um, this, I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't just post a lot of links. Maybe we should post them as you do your your talk, Adam. If you um, yeah, just ask me to post a link, and I will. Uh, and I'll do it. That might be a little bit more interactive. Um, Let's do that. Yeah. As I said, there'll be a Q&A at the end. Um, so put your questions in the chat or raise your hand. Um, and uh, we'll get round to you. And uh, Adam will be pleased to answer your questions. Just going to run through a few announcements. Uh, WordPress 6.2 was released at the end of March, and WordPress 6.3 is currently in development. You can get involved um, as well to, and contribute to um, WordPress 6.3. So there's a link if you want to to dig into that. Um, WordCamps are coming back after the pandemic and WordCamp Europe is only a couple of weeks away now. Um, so there's a link to that. I'm not sure if the tickets are still available. I didn't, haven't checked, but I'm going to be there. Adam, are you going to be there? Yes, I am awesome. going to be there. There awesome. will be a WordPress Playground table at Contributor Day and yes. WordPress yes. Playground session in WP Connect on Saturday. Yeah, I'm I'm doing a workshop on migrating a plugin to to blocks as well at the at WordCamp. Um, WordCamp US is a bit earlier this year than uh, in previous years. Um, it's going to be the twenty fourth to the twenty sixth of August. So there's a link for that. And then, as I said. Um, WordCamps are coming back, and if you're looking for a local, if you can't make one of the flagship ones, and you're looking for a local one, just hop, and hop over to uh, central.wordcamp.org and find a WordCamp near you. Okay, so um, let me officially introduce Adam. He uh, works for Automatic, is one of the core developers of WordPress Playground. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself, Adam, before we get started on the presentation? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as Michael said, I uh, work at Automatic. I'm a WordPress core committer. I live in Poland, Wrocław. And last year I had this problem with WordPress where I 
wanted to start teaching people more things about how to get started, how to build blogs, how to interact with Gutenberg. And turns out that was very hard to do because every tutorial I could come up with would have start would have to start with a long setup section. And then I thought long and hard, well, is there anything to be done so that a new prospective developer could just open a link, start a course, and just start learning there without any setup steps at all. And turns out the answer was yes. And that's WordPress Playground. And I'm about to introduce it to, to all of you. OK, amazing. Thank you. Um, let me hand over to you. Take it away, Adam. Awesome. So I'm going to show my screen and uh, show you the presentation I prepared. Mm. Da, 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 da. Da, da. All right, so WordPress Playground. Uh, word, this is WordPress Playground, and it's a complete WordPress uh, instance running exclusively in my browser. There is no server with PHP. There is no server with a database. There is no server at all. There's just my browser and the JavaScript. And in the next hour, I'm going to tell you why this is an interesting, how it works internally, and how exactly can you use it? Can you start using it today? So first things first, why is WordPress Playground interesting? And that is because WordPress is very difficult. And I don't even mean creating websites in WordPress. I mean, starting your journey with WordPress. So if I'm a new user and someone told me WordPress is cool, you should check it out. Well, I'm going to Google how to install WordPress. and. I'm going to find out the installation doesn't actually take five minutes because I need to perform all these steps full of three uh, letter acronyms that I'm not familiar with. And I'm not going to know what to do with PHP and FTP and all that. So perhaps I'm going to try something else. Uh, the only alternative I have for figuring this out is finding a company that already did it, a hosting company, and giving them my credit card. And maybe I don't want to do that just to get acquainted with WordPress. <clears throat> or if I'm a prospective developer and I want to learn WordPress, well, then every tutorial starts with something like this. This is actually one I wrote for Gutenberg Data. There is a lengthy setup. I need to know how to set up my PHP and uh, Node.js and NPM and all this. It's not very approachable for a new person. So perhaps I'm going to try a framework that has these online interactive things that I can get, just get started with. Or if I'm a part of a product team and my friends send me a pull request, well, I don't have a local development environment and I don't have a staging. So what exactly am I supposed to do with it? I'm unable to, to test it without either of these. Or if I'm a product company, I'm, I'm building a, a plugin for WordPress. Well, I would really like to show people how my plugin works, but at the moment I'm kind of have to do videos and screenshots because it's not possible uh, for me to easily show a live demo to my customers. And so this, uh, actually, I think there's a, just a second, I'm going to X that, all right, sorry. Now it's just slides. So I cannot show a live demo because everyone would have to get their own WordPress instance and people would start changing things in WP Admin and I don't want that. And I'm not going to give a separate WordPress to uh, every single person because that would, cost a lot of money. So no live demos, very few plugins have that. So in WordPress, it's difficult to install it. It's difficult to get started with um, learning how to code, how to use it. It's difficult to test changes. My uh, colleagues from the team are, are sending me and it's difficult to distribute and demo my code. So there are some solutions that uh, improve the situation like there's local and there's WPNF, and maybe they are going to make the installation easier on my local machine. Maybe they are going to help with testing, but I'm not going to embed local or WPNF on my homepage. I'm not going to be able to use it on my phone, right? I need a desktop device. I need to install something, or I need someone else who already did that and can send me a link. So WordPress Playground solves all these problems with a single click. And the way it works is that if I want to install WordPress, uh, and I have WordPress Playground somewhere in the internet. I have a link to that. Well, I can just click a button and there's WordPress. And it just works in my browser tab. I only had to visit this page. 
Furthermore, I can customize it. So I can select a theme, a bunch of plugins, and I can just click a button and they are already being downloaded and installed for me. And I don't have anything locally and there's no server handling this for me. This is all happening in my browser tab. So installation is very, very simple. I just visit a website. Uh, then if I want to learn how to code with WordPress Playground, I can just visit a course and I can start learning. So this is an interactive code snippet. And I published a blog post with some of these uh, about a new API for modifying HTML. It was merged in WordPress 6.2. By the way, like it's uh, it's beautiful, you should check it out. But this is a blog post that I published that teaches you that API. So you'll notice here's a uh, code example and I can run it and it runs in my browser. Furthermore, I can customize it. I can change something here. So I'll make it say, hello, WordCamp. And if I run it again, well, the output changes. So the entire PHP with this API loaded is running in my browser tab and I didn't have to set up anything. I didn't have to download anything. I just visited a link and that's it. So I I just wanted to, uh, I, I just want to take a minute to appreciate like how great that is because if I uh, only have a, if I only have a mobile device, I'm not a developer yet. I have a different career. I have a break, all right? I have 30 minutes to spare. I'm not going to take out a laptop from a backpack. Maybe I don't even have a laptop, but I probably have a phone or a tablet. And I can use this to start learning immediately. And I can learn on a train and I can learn in a plane. And I would really like at one point in time for the entire WordPress documentation to actually become interactive. Right, so you wouldn't have to even look for external resources. It would be learnable by default. You maybe even you would maybe even have a try it button and start building button and start contributing and all that, and they would all just give you an immediate experience. So online code snippets are nice, but what if I want to build something more? Uh, like if I actually am ready for a local development environment. Well, with WordPress Playground, I can go to my VS Code and there is a plugin. And if I install that plugin and I mm, start WordPress Server, well, I can start writing WordPress plugins and themes immediately, right? It's just a click of a button. Install a plugin, start a server, and it works in my browser. I don't need Docker. I don't need PHP. I don't need MySQL. It's just VS Code and the extension. That's everything I need. And I'm ready for building uh, WordPress plugins. So this is a, a huge improvement over what we used to have with downloading a list of dependencies and installing and using terminal, right? Right, right now it's a button. It's a single click, click and that's it. And if I want to test a change from a colleague, uh, from a developer colleague who, mm, who sent it over to me with WordPress Playground, this is as simple as just click, Click and that's it. So this is our PR that we've seen before. And only this time there is a link to try it. So this pull request just adds a secret message in WP admin. And there's a preview link at the bottom of it. So let's click that link and see what happens. It opens WordPress Playground with my pull request already loaded. And there's my secret message. But let's see if this works on PHP 8. So I just select a different PHP version and there's an error. Cool. I'm glad it was so easy to test and I'm glad to uh, have tested that because I could have learned in production from disappointed users. So one thing about WordPress Playground is that it allows you to easily switch PHP and WordPress versions, which is excellent for compatibility testing. I could test my plugin on WordPress 6.1 and 6.0 and PHP 7.4 and 8.2 and do it with just a click. So if I'm a product company and I have a, I want to do a live demo with WordPress Playground, I can put that demo right on my homepage. So this is a store that I briefly showed before. And this time we don't have a video with an actual WooCommerce store right here. I can open a product. I can add it to a cart. I can go to checkout. I can do anything I want here. This is an actual store working in my browser. Any other person who comes there will be able to, to use it like their own instance. And by the way, this is how it's implemented. It only took like 24 lines of code to create a demo. And most of it is uh, JSON. So this is very, very, very accessible 
for, for using. There's no complex setup even to build these demos. So let's take a look how all of that seemingly magic thing works internally. So there are two parts to WordPress Playground. There is a PHP working in a browser and there is WordPress working without a server. Excuse me for a second. So let's take a look at PHP in the browser. This is possible thanks to a new technology called WebAssembly. And WebAssembly allows you to run regular software that we know from desktops and servers in the browser, just in JavaScript. So let's talk about C programs and PHP for a second. So turns out PHP, the programming language, uh, if I want to run PHP code, I have to use PHP interpreter. And that interpreter is in itself a program written in a C programming language. So the thing about C programs uh, is that uh, this is a very simple C program that's going to print hello world on my screen. The thing about C programs is that I can run them, I can compile them, and I can run them on my computer. So typically, the process works like this. I uh, give a program to a compiler, I get an executable file, and that could be hello.out or hello.exe on Windows or any number of other extensions. The point is I can execute it. And when I do it, I see hello world on my screen. So with WebAssembly, we can do exactly the same thing, but for the web. So I use a different compiler called mscripten, and it gives me executable files. Only this time, it's not exe, it's hello.wasm and hello.js. So I get two files. And then I can execute them, and I can do it anywhere I have JavaScript. So I can execute them in Node, or in my browser, or in a VS Code extension, or anywhere else. So PHP Interpreter is a C program, which means I can take the source code, of the PHP programming language, and I can compile it to executable files, and then I can execute them in the browser, which means I can run PHP code. Like there's a lot of concepts here, everything's linked, like programs, compilers, execution. The point is I can take PHP, the programming language, do a bunch of transformations, and now I can run PHP inside JavaScript, which actually looks more like this uh, because PHP has more than one version. And every version has its own uh, separate set of executable files, which means the demo I showed before, you remember the little version switcher where I was uh, choosing PHP 8. It's actually pretty boring how that works internally. It only tells the browser, hey, download this other PHP file. Don't use PHP underscore 7 underscore 4. Use PHP underscore 8 underscore 0. So this is PHP. Now let's take a look at how WordPress works without a server. So. To run WordPress, I normally need to download WordPress, install it, and navigate through it. So downloading is a solved problem. We have WordPress.org. There is a download button there. I can download WordPress zip. And inside a browser tab in a JavaScript application in WordPress Playground, the exact same thing happens. There is a fetch API in the browser. It's used. WordPress gets downloaded. That's it. But where it gets interesting is when we talk about the installation. So normally to install WordPress, I need to run the installation wizard and it will ask me for my MySQL database credentials. So it will ask what's the host, what's the username and password. And that's all cool, but in the browser, we don't have MySQL. So what do we do in WordPress Playground? Well, we still use a database, but we use a database called SQLite. And this one we can run in a browser tab. Mm -hmm for a technical detail, that's just a file. SQLite database is just a file. And then we run a, something called SQL Translator. So there is an official WordPress plugin that you can install in any of your WordPress projects, and it will allow you to use WordPress with a SQLite database. Technically, the way it works is that WordPress actually thinks it talks to MySQL. It uses MySQL queries that are not always compatible with SQLite, and the translation layer takes them, it rewrites them to SQLite, runs them in SQLite, takes the response from SQLite, translates that back to work for WordPress, and passes it through the WordPress code. So WordPress thinks it has the database it needs. Uh, we use SQLite. Everything works beautifully. And this is actually quite, quite, quite reliable. So more than 99% of WordPress core unit tests 
work uh, work on that. And the remaining part is mostly specific to, to MySQL and not even relevant in this context. And that's installing WordPress. So now we also need to you know, open WordPress in our browser window and start navigating through it. So how can we do that? With classic WordPress, our web browser goes through the internet to the server somewhere remote. And on that server, we have PHP, we have WordPress, and our browser says, hey, give me a homepage. And the server says, sure, I'm going to uh, take your request, tell PHP about it. PHP is going to produce the homepage for me and I'll give it back to you. And this is all cool, but in WordPress Playground, well, we don't have a server. So what do we do? Well, we don't have a server remotely, but uh, how WordPress Playground works is that it takes that server and it puts it inside your web browser. So now your web browser is a device that has two functions. One is browsing the internet and the WordPress website, but the second function is now, it actually runs the WordPress website. The server works inside your browser. So there's one little detail that doesn't add up here, and that is, to use websites, you know, we, we click on links, we submit forms, and all of that traffic, it has to go somewhere, right? Like browser has a URL in there, it will send network traffic. So we cannot send that network traffic anywhere, which is why we use something called a service worker. And service worker is a JavaScript feature that allows you to handle some of that network traffic on your own. So in our case, anytime there's a request going to WordPress somewhere, we just say, oh, no, 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 no. Like we'll take it over from here and the service worker passes it back to the browser, to the WordPress instance running in there, takes the response, puts it back in a part that you can see, renders WordPress website and that's the entire magic. So we downloaded WordPress, we installed WordPress and now we can navigate through it. So we have a running WordPress. So let's see how exactly you can use that. What is it good for? So there are four ways of using WordPress Playground. Uh, first one doesn't require you to write any code at all. Then there are simple APIs, more complex APIs, and like the most complex API. So let's take a look at no code. That's super simple. Just go to this link right here. And by the way, uh, there's a resource page uh, where all these three links are posted and it will be available in the chat. So. To use WordPress Playground with no code, you just go to this link and it opens WordPress. It runs in your browser. So at this point, you can even turn off internet. It's, it is still going to work. And what you can do with it is you can build a theme or an entire site. You can save it, uh, you can restore it later. You can try out any plugin you want. You can try out 50 plugins and it's not going to break any website that you have. And you want to stand out, if you want to start over, you just refresh that page, and it's going to give a brand new playground instance. All the data that you put in there, it is private. It stays in your browser. It is not sent over to any external service. So you can do anywhere you uh, anything you want, and you can ju then just scrap it, start over, or save your progress, restore it, host your site that you download anywhere. All of these things are possible. And then you can test your code on multiple versions of WordPress and PHP. Then there is a query API, and this is the simplest way of integrating WordPress Playground in an, with an actual application. So the way it works is that you embed Playground using an iframe on any web page, and you give it a special something in the URL. So this iframe, uh, it shows how uh, it is depicted on the preview at the bottom of, uh, of the slide. So it embeds playground.wordpress.net, but then it says themes equal pendant. And that tells Playground to grab that theme from the WordPress theme di directory and install it on that uh, on that WordPress before, mm, before allowing you to interact with it. So theme is one thing, but you can also tell it to use a specific PHP version or WordPress version or a specific plugin or go to a specific URL. And there's a ton more of these. Uh, they are all listed in the official documentation and the link will be available in a chat. And let's take a look at what you can build with it. So this is the demo that we've seen earlier. It leaves on developer.works.org slash playground. And we've uh, selected a theme. We've selected a bunch of plugins. So 
the way it technically works is that nothing special happens on developer.wordpress.org slash playground. The only thing it does is it creates this query URL. So it makes it like it, it writes plugin coblocks, plugin bbpress, like anything you select, it just appends it to a string. And then it takes that string and puts it in iframe source. And all the hard work happens inside WordPress Playground. So this is this was very, very, very easy to prepare. Now, another API you can use in WordPress Playground is called Blueprints. And Blueprints are JSON files where you list all the steps necessary to set up a WordPress Playground instance. So you can run any PHP code in there. In this instance, we are inserting a new post. And you can log in as an admin, and you can write files and install, install plugins and themes. And not only plugins and themes from the WordPress directory, any plugins and themes. You can install your plugin, or you can apply a PR in this. Actually, there is a, oh, I'll be talking about that in a, in a minute. So uh, for now, let's stay here. So Blueprints give you a whole lot of control. It's a very approachable API. You don't even need to uh, write any JavaScript. You don't need a code editor. You can just write some JSON, and then that JSON, you can paste it in the URL, which is uh, explained in the documentation, and Playground will, will just use it. So you don't even have to download any NPM package, right? You just declare what is it that you want exactly, put it in the URL, that's it, right? You can try it right after this presentation even. And what's building with Blueprints is this very cool translations playground. So translating WordPress used to require, you know, installing WordPress, uh, downloading some translation files, and maybe installing a plugin, and maybe configuring that plugin, like a bunch of steps, if you wanted to see uh, things in context. Well, in here, you go to a web website, and there's a link at the bottom, and also like in the resources page. And then on that website, there's a uh, playground instance, and there's a blueprint, and that blueprint downloads translations files for you, it installs Glotpress local, it installs uh, any plugin you want. So in here we have friends plugin and activates this feature where you can translate things in context. And also another cool thing about it is that you can even integrate ChatGPT with it if you have open API or open AI API key. So this was built with blueprints and it took, I think, I checked that yesterday, the most recent version, I think it's 100 lines of JSON to build that. So how cool is that? And finally, you have a JavaScript API, and this is the most powerful of all, but also there's the highest barrier of entry. So this is available via, via an NPM package, and uh, you can import it and use all the functions to you know, start Playground, connect to it, like run files, uh, dispatch requests to WordPress, run PHP code, do anything you want in there. There's a ton of helpers. Uh, you can also use any blueprints with that that you want. But you need a code editor for that. And you need to use that NPM package. So you, you probably also need to spend a little bit more time with the documentation. So this one gives you an absolute full, complete control over a playground. But it also requires a little bit more effort to get started with. So, uh, so all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll show that in a second. So for now, like let's summarize the slides. And WordPress Playground is WordPress in your browser. It is ready with a single click. There are APIs you can use to customize it. And it's official WordPress project. It is free and it is open source. So the links leave at bit.ly slash WordPress Playground. And if you look up WordPress Playground, like in GitHub, Google, Twitter, like you'll find a lot more stuff. But I'm going to show you also something else. So with WordPress Playground, there's a whole lot of things that you can do. So let's take a look at specifics. Uh, in here, like this is Playground site. And in that Playground site, I can build a theme. So we'll get there. But for now, let's take a look at how we can install plugins there. So we want to have a Gutenberg plugin and a create block theme plugin. And we are also going to install the skate park theme. And the first way to do it is to, well, just do it from WP admin, upload them. So I'm going to go to plugins, add new. And the first thing I see is there's an error. And the reason for that is, as I told you before, WordPress Playground doesn't send any data at all to any external sites. 
Well, unfortunately, that includes WordPress plugin directory. So I won't be able to see any plugins in my WP admin, but I can still upload them and I can still use the query API. So I'm going to upload them in here just to go through the process. So I have the Gutenberg plugin and I just do it as regularly, upload it, activate it. It's there. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for create block plugin and upload it, install, activate. And you can already see that's a little bit mundane, but let's let's complete that so we can take a look at, at a better option and actually feel some relief. So I'm going to also do it for the skate park theme. So yeah, all right. I have all these things in there. I can activate my theme. And if I go to homepage, I'll see, sure, this is the skate park theme. And if I go to WP admin, I'll see, sure, there is Gutenberg in here and I can go to Gutenberg demo and it all works. So that worked fine, but it also took a little bit, right? It wasn't that pleasant of a process. So let's take a look at automation. So the query API that I showed you earlier, it is the perfect use case for this. So I'll refresh this, get a brand new WordPress and let's install some plugins in an automated way. So in here, I'll just type theme equals skate park. And then I'll say uh, ampersand plugin equals Gutenberg. And then I'll say ampersand plugin again, which is fine. And I'll say create block theme and just press enter. And now playground does all the work for me. So it downloads Gutenberg and create block theme and uh, uh, skate park theme activates all them. So this is the exact same result as I got before. Like all these plugins are here. The theme is there. I can go to Gutenberg demo. Fine. So that was a little bit of a uh, trick to make the setup more pleasant. So what what of it? Now let's let's take a look at the actual application of this and build a theme inside WordPress Playground. So with all my plugins in place, I can now go to the site editor, and in that site editor. Well, let's customize that skate park theme a little bit and make it our own. Let's make our own theme based on that. So I'm going to customize the background and maybe make it blue. And I'll make a bunch of other changes that I just sped up here for you to uh, save a bunch of minutes, but I'm updating fonts, line heights, all that. So this is a my version of skate park theme. So I can now go to options and create block theme since I have the plugin. And if I scroll that uh, sidebar a little bit, there's an export button. I press it and it downloads my customized theme. So that file I can use to install the theme on any WordPress instance. So let's try it in another playground, shall we? So I open a new tab, which gives me a brand new WordPress uh, from scratch, and I can add theme, upload it, and use the exact zip file that we just exported. So if, if I install that and activate my theme, and now I go to homepage, well, there it is, right? So I just built an entire theme without ever installing WordPress, doing any setup at all. I just put something in the URL and started working, started doing things. So this saves a whole lot of work on getting everything to work, but let's not end there. My website is pretty empty. Let's import some content on it. And WordPress allows you to export your site content and then also import it. So I'm going to go to tools, import, and I have a file that I prepared earlier that I'm going to put in that importer. So I'll select it. It's an XML file. It contains data for testing themes. So I need to choose the author for all posts. And the first thing I'm going to see after pressing submit is there's a, there's a bunch of failures and that's fine. Uh, these media files are remotely, so WordPress Playground cannot download them. Well, maybe one day there will be a feature for that, but it's cool, cool. All the content is in here, even if there are no media files. So I have a lot of new pages. I can browse them. I can check you know, how quotes look like, headers, all these things. And I could even import my entire site in here. Well, let's build an entire site and not stop at a, at a theme and some content. So this is WordPress Playground documentation. Let's try to rebuild this as closely as possible within the confines of our new themes. So we'll use those colors and fonts, but we'll use this content. So 
I'll find a pattern to match uh, what I need as closely as possible. And this is a two column pattern and I'll paste my content here. And again, I'm going to speed all of this up just to save us some time. So I put all the content here and then maybe I put a video and then maybe I remove everything I don't need in there, like the, uh, the menus and all that and update site title. So that's a bunch of work. But once I'm finished, this is my site. And well, I would hate to lose it when I refer to the page. And by the way, this is a preview in new tab, which also works in Playground. So this is very cool. But I don't want to lose my work. So I can now go to my Playground site where I started and I press this little download button. And it downloads the entire site as a zip file to my computer. And by entire site, I mean, if I go there, to, to my downloads folder and I unzip it, well, everything that I need to host that site is in there. So all WordPress core files are here and all plugins are here and my theme. And there's even an entire database in a SQLite file. So this is my complete site. Nothing is missing from here. I can take this uh, archive and I can host it somewhere. Well, what else I can do? I can send it over to someone and they will be able to import it in Playground. So let's try that. This, there's this little import button, I pressed it, I use my file, I import, and there's my site, exactly how I left it. So I can save my work, I can restore my work, I can host it somewhere else. And then finally, I can test if it continues to work on other PHP and WordPress versions. So let's use WordPress 6.0 here. And this is a brand new six, WordPress 6.0. So I'm going to import the theme that I built earlier. So Let's select it, let's upload it. Well, we install, we activate, and we check. So it works on WordPress 6.0, which is really cool, but I have a bad feeling about this. So let's also make sure on WordPress 5.9, since we have reasons to support it in this, in this case. So let's go to admin and appearance and themes. And once I try to do that same thing in WordPress 5.9, I'm going to learn, well, this theme is not compatible with WordPress 5.9. So I was able to find all of that without doing a ton of setup and dockers and, and configs. I just did a bunch of clicks and it all worked right there in my browser. So that's, um, that's the video. And this is WordPress Playground documentation that uh, I was nudging it uh, earlier. So it has uh, some videos and cool examples, but like <clears throat> everything I just, uh, showed and demo is here and also for some of these apis like the blueprint api well <clears throat> there are <clears throat> sorry about that there are also ah, much better there are also <clears throat> interactive code examples so here's a blueprint and i can just click to try it out now and it's going to <clears throat> sorry create a wordpress with this php version with this wordpress version and i'm going to be already logged in as an admin so when I'm not streaming, this actually loads much faster, but that was still pretty fast. Here's WordPress 5.9 and all these other examples, you can use them, you can try them right here. They are not editable yet, but they are going to be. So that's WordPress Playground. That's what I wanted to show you. And we can open this up for questions now. Amazing, thank you very much, Adam. It's, uh, it looks so impressive. Um, yes. Um... Let's have your questions. Uh, either raise your hand or uh, post your questions in the chat and um, and we'll get around to you. So while people are uh, getting their questions together in the chat, um, I've got a question. Does when you close the tab, so it stores the data in the SQLite database, does that yeah. persist across instances? So if you close the tab or your browser, and you reopen so, it. Yeah. So at the moment, uh, each, uh, like once you close your tab, that entire database is wiped out. It lives in that browser tab. Uh, however, what you can do is, uh, you know, while you have that tab open, you can um, edit a page and you can click preview a new tab and it's going to open a new browser tab with that same WordPress. So you can have as many tabs as you want referencing your original WordPress site in your first tab is just don't close that tab. 
because when, once you close it, it all will be gone. And there is a feature planned for WordPress Playground to have this mode, like persistent mode, that will store uh, all your site in local storage or like one of the other storage mechanisms. And it will allow you to actually refresh the page and see the exact same site. So technically like it will import it and re-import like details. Point is right now you close that tab, you lose it. In the future, you'll have the option to retain it. Mm. But for now you need to save it, press the button, yeah. export it. it you yeah. need to save it or export it in the way that you showed just at the end of the, the demo there. Yeah. And the, so, but that export, exports to the, I saw in the database folder, you had a SQLite database, but WordPress, if you exactly. want to transfer that to say a live WordPress site, having developed it in WordPress playground, um, WordPress will in, import a SQLite database, will it? So there are a few ways to go about it. Mm -hmm. If you just want to host what you build and don't actually transfer it anywhere, like just take the exact thing you build and host it, it will just work. You don't have to do anything, um, transfer anything to MySQL. You can use that exact database. If, however, you would like to take parts of it and put it on your live website that uses MySQL, well, there's a bunch of techniques you can use. So one of them would be, well, you can export uh, you know, SQL dump and import it in there. Like that's pretty advanced. A lot of things uh, to take care of a lot could go wrong. So what else you could do? Well, depends on which part of it you, you want to import. Maybe you can use WordPress exporters and just grab your content. Maybe you want to export just the theme and use that. Maybe you don't need the entire site. So depending, <clears throat> depending on the use case, you can export parts of it. You can use the entire thing or you can, instead of importing it to an existing site, you can just host this as an existing site. Many ways to go about it. Okay, thank you. Oh, actually, what I showed there in the meantime with importing the XML file, that was an example of moving just the content between WordPress sites. Mm -hmm. So that file was exported from another site earlier on. And then I grabbed just that content bit and put it in WordPress Playground. So the same thing can be done from WordPress Playground to a live site. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes, of course, you could just export the content and then, yeah. Um. Okay, have we got any questions from the floor? Please post your questions in the chat. Um, oh, here's a question. Does it support Word, WordPress CLI, WP CLI? That's a very good question. So yeah. WordPress Playground uh, is many different things. So there was the... Uh, playground in the browser that I was focusing on today, but there's also the VS Code extension that I briefly mentioned. So it turns out, as of yesterday, there is also a CLI tool for terminal. It is called WP Now. It is built on top of WordPress Playground. And in it, you can use WP CLI. So Sorry, what was it called? WP? It is WP Now, WP Dash Now. So okay. it is the NPM I mean, put, package. I'll put that in the yeah. chat, WP Now. Actually, maybe I can uh, pull a link to an announcement post. There was one that released yesterday. So you can use this to run WPCLI on your local computer, but there is also a support for the web version upcoming. So you'll be able to use WPCLI exactly on the website. There's a terminal. Uh, there will be a terminal window. And uh, there was a CloudFest hackathon earlier this year. When me and Daniel Backhuber, we were leading a project aimed to create an in-browser WordPress development environment. So that was an MVP we hacked together in two and a half days. And what it did is we had a code editor in the browser. It had a terminal that you could use. And then we opened that on a phone. We turned off the internet. <laughs> we built a WordPress plugin on that phone. We activated in WP Admin, mind you, with internet turned off and started using it. And it all worked beautifully. So that is very much possible. There is no official support for WPCLI in the browser. It is locally, but there will. Mm. Awesome. So you'll actually have a terminal in the browser. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So any other questions? Anybody have any questions for Adam? Okay. Oh. 
Halma is just commenting with a great opportunity. Thank you. Uh, I have the resource for WP now, so I'm going to okay, paste great. the link on the chat that. right now. Thank you. No. Awesome, great. So the instance of WordPress that uh, spins up is um, is it always in English? Can you set the language? Right I now, guess you, you can set the yeah. language in the admin. Yeah. yeah. So in fact, uh, I'm going to uh, share one more thing, and I briefly nudged that during the presentation. So let's see. So this is the translations playground. And as you may notice, uh, it says DE in here. So this means it's downloading German translation files, applying them in WordPress. Like, and it also like installs the translations plugin and all that. But the point is, this is in German. So there are no like uh, controls you can use by default to you know like just type something in uh, playground.wordpress.net to get it but this is an application built using wordpress playground and it has german translations and it's not that difficult to to build there is some effort you have uh, you have to put in a crafting a blueprint it's not that much so it is supported it is there is no like ui control for it. there is no a single button but you can absolutely do that do it mm -hmm. but the admin pages would still be in english oh this is admin right oh Oh, sorry. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Sorry. That was, <laughs> it's uh, you had a window over the uh, yeah. Okay. How did you identify this need? How did you come up with this idea for creating? Uh, so creating this cool uh, technology. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I was writing a tutorial. And I spent a couple of days on writing a setup section and figuring out like all the different ways it can go wrong and how to make it simple. And then I thought, wow, like this is complex. Like you need to, you need to know what a terminal is. You need to have a bunch of software, like you need to have NPM and, and node and, uh, and Git and be able to use these things. And I felt like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to expect people to spend an entire day worth of work before they can take their first step. So I thought, well, you can teach JavaScript online on sites. There are plenty of live demos, but with WordPress, it gets more difficult because you have REST API and you need to use that. So you will need a WordPress somewhere in the cloud, but people would start updating things in WP admin, putting like their own content in there. Like that could go very wrong very quickly and would be a massive, massive security risk. So I felt like, what if all that REST API, like the entire WordPress, like everything, it could run in your browser. So you wouldn't need a cloud instance, like no one would have to spin that for you. It will just all be there. Like it would be very yours and only you would have uh, access to it. You would be able to modify it. So that happened, right? Like we uh, we, we just saw it on the presentation and uh, like I, I demoed a blog post on my blog where you can play with uh, WP uh, HTML tag processor shipped in WordPress 6.2. So the next step for that is actually finding a way to make a ton of code examples interactive inside WordPress documentation, like the official one. So maybe that exact tag processor tutorial could be a part of it. And maybe every other place that teaches you how to, oh, how to build a plugin programmatically or how to use this hook or how to display something in WP admin, right? Like instead of videos and screenshots, like things that go very, uh, go stale very easily, something changes in the software. Now I need to record a new video, like that is very hard to maintain. Maybe all these things could be automated. Oh, and I'll share a, share a cool uh, vision part of WordPress Playground with you. So imagine, imagine the actual WordPress code base, like there are comments in there next to functions. So these comments could uh, contain examples and these examples could then automatically become interactive in WordPress.org docs, but furthermore, they could be testable. So every time I make a change to WordPress, if I break the documentation, something will flash red. So the documentation could always be up to date and it could always be interactive. And yeah, 
there, there, there's a lot more like I could I could keep talking and talking about that but that, that's that's kind of my dream here so it was basically your idea originally so as well as one of yeah. the core developers of this it's yeah your like instigation. I spent the last the last like eight months working on this and yeah. it's picking up more traction lately and I very much welcome all the eager contributors. Like if there's any feature that you're missing, uh, you can help build it. Yeah, if there's okay. anything that's confusing about it, um, even filing an issue, like it goes a very long way. All the feedback is super useful. So please, please, please uh, come over, uh, join the Meta Playground Slack channel, org Slack, like file a, any issue in the repo that you see fit. Uh, and I'm also very happy to help you just get started with WordPress Playground. So if there's a pull request you would like to make, but you are not sure where to start, ping me somewhere on GitHub or on Slack. Like I would love to help you. So the Slack channel is meta-playground, yes? yes? Yes. Yes, I'm just putting that in the chat as well. And I've just posted a link to the project repo. Um, so if anybody wants to contribute in any way, raise issues, you know, if in usage or testing, you find an issue, create an issue there. And if you want to contribute, um, yeah, uh, create a PR. What kind of contributions yeah. would, are you looking for? What, you know, what, um, where do you want to take this? So what could people work on to so, take this further? All kinds of contributions in particular, if, you start building something with Fortress Playground, um, just unrelated app, like I don't even want to contribute to, to Playground Core. And you go through the documentation. And at any point you go like, you scratch your head and like, oh, what am I supposed to do here? Like, this is confusing. Please let's, uh, please open an issue or even better, please edit that page and propose like a better writing. It will go a very long way to, to help others. Or if there's a feature that you're missing, well, if you open an issue and tell everyone about it, that's super helpful. If you want to open a PR to help start building it, that's also awesome. But if you just want to help triage existing issues and uh, just figure out like, oh, maybe this can already be built or maybe this is a super high priority and like this is a very important problem affecting many people because it affects you, that's also fantastic. So everything at all, like WordPress Playground is super open for contributions and Oh, it may seem very scary because, you know, WebAssembly, all this stuff, but just so you know, you don't have to know what, you don't have to know any WebAssembly at all. WebAssembly is a very important part of the project, but it's like 1% maybe of the code base or, or even less. And most of the time, you don't have to touch it. Like most of WordPress Playground is JavaScript and, uh, and some CSS. So the translation playground that I showed you earlier, that came together the initial demo. It was built, built by Alex Kirk, uh, who's also a WordPress core contributor. Uh, he built that in, I think, like about two or three hours from first learning that Playground has a public API and you can now use it through a website. So this is quite approachable, is, is all I'm saying. Excellent. And the documentation looks really good as well. It looks like you guys have done a really good job on the documentation. Thank you. To... A long way to go still, and I'd love to improve everything that can be improved there. And for that, uh, a lot of feedback will be super useful, but I'm, I'm glad to hear it looks good. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like we don't have any questions from the floor. You clearly explained things so well that nobody has any questions. <laughs> <laughs> so well done on That's that. That's a good news. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I, we've posted a whole load of links in the chat. If you want to keep those links or to refer to them later, it's um, save the chat now. Um, some way there's, there's a little, at bottom of the chat, there should be a little save button that you can, um, you can save the chat into a text file and then you can refer to all the links there later on. Um, let me just remind you before we close up that uh, WordPress is open source. Anyone can contribute. Um, head over to make.wordpress.core to see, uh, sorry, make.wordpress.org to see how you can contribute. Core is one of the ways that you can contribute. And of course, you can contribute to WordPress Playground. I'm sure Adam would welcome any contributions there. Um, Absolutely. 
I'm just going to share a quick link for like getting started with contributing to WordPress Playground as well. Awesome. Here it is. Fantastic. Thanks for that. Okay, so we're just a couple of minutes uh, short of the hour. So um, uh, I think we can wrap it up here. So I'm just going to thank you all for coming. And in particular, thank, you so much for coming. thank Adam for his excellent presentation. That was super interesting. Oh, thank and you. Thank you for take, taking the time. And thank you for that. Thank you for having Contribution me. to the WordPress ecosystem. It looks amazing <laughs> and, and will be super useful to, uh, to all kinds of users, developers, Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This was excellent.